So today I want to talk to you guys about The Greatest Gift. And this book comes with every single shoebox that is sent. Um, in one of my last videos, I talked about The Greatest Journey book, which is this guy. And it is 12 Weeks of Discipleship. But from what I understand, this guy only comes with the boxes if the sender chooses to pay a little extra to send it. We get them with the majority of the boxes that we receive here in country. So today, I'm going to talk to you guys about this one that's called The Greatest Gift. And this book does go with every single shoebox that is sent. And what is incredible about this book is that it is in full color and it tells the entire story of the life of Jesus. And it recaps it in a very summarized way, but it also has a lot of details for the kids. Um, a lot of the pages in this are actually included stories in the greatest journey. So in this one, some of these stories that are in here are in that 12 week discipleship. So even if the kids don't come back for the 12 weeks of discipleship, every one of them gets this book. And this one has a lot of the same stories. Now it doesn't have the activities and the in-depth like teaching, but it does include a lot of what this book has. So in the grand scheme of things, the great thing is that they still get a lot of the gospel, a lot of the Bible, that if they don't choose to come back for the discipleship, they're still going to learn more about Jesus. So this is The Greatest Gift, and it starts out with John talking, telling, um, telling us that he wants to tell us a story about one of his friends. So John is narrating and he's telling us about Jesus. And I love that because in the Bible, John was sent to be a witness before Jesus came. But it talks about how Jesus is the son of God and it does give actual scripture Jesus. passages as well. Jesus. Jesus. Is that Jesus? Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. Jesus. So it talks about who Jesus is. It mentions that he has authority over everything created. It tells the story of how he calmed the storm how he raised Lazarus from the dead. So again, this is part of who is Jesus. It also tells, again, who is Jesus. So it tells the story of him feeding the 5,000. So it talks about how God made everything good. It gets into the story of creation. And it talks about how at the start, everything was good, which leads us into the gospel of how mankind sinned. And so it takes us from God created everything good to then talk about our sinful nature. And from there, this little book that they get then goes into the fact that God had a plan and he sent Jesus to save us from our sin. So this here is the story of Zacchaeus. No. No. And again, it goes in depth to how God sent Jesus to save us from our sins. And this is probably the most important part of the book because it talks about how Jesus saved us from our sin. So it said, Jesus saves us from sin. Jesus never sinned. Not even once. He lived a perfect life. But all of us have done bad things, sinful things. We deserve to be punished for our sin. There's nothing we can do to save ourselves. We could never be good enough. We need to be saved and forgiven. It goes in depth and explains that Jesus is the only way to be saved from our sins. It talks about how Jesus gave himself to be hung on the cross to pay the price for our sins. But then it also continues, which so many times we tell the gospel message and it ends there. Jesus paid the price for our sins, but we forget that Jesus is alive. We forget that after three days he rose again, that he's in heaven with the Father, and that we can have eternal life if we believe in Jesus and follow him. And it even has an example of a prayer that they could pray to accept Jesus. What are they doing? I mean. Amen. Praying. Amen. Now, I don't believe that there's one perfect prayer to pray to be saved. However, the fact that this gives an example, I think is wonderful. And the fact that it teaches the full gospel and explains to them that in order to be saved, you have to believe. That's the important part. Even if they say a prayer in their head, I think that's what's important, that it comes from their heart, that they understand who Jesus is and believe in him. 
not that they repeat word for word a prayer. I think that's something that is often misconstrued. But I love that this book that every single child gets is so detailed and explicit about the gospel, about who Jesus is and the necessity that we have because of our sins and how there's nothing we can do to save ourselves from our sin. So every child gets the gift. That day they hear the gospel because the leaders tell the story of Jesus. They get to take home this book and then hopefully they share it with their families and it has a ripple effect throughout their household. But think about the fact that every single gift that is sent, that child has two ways to learn about Jesus. The day that they get the gift and hear the gospel verbally told, and then this book that goes in depth to tell who Jesus is, the miracles he did, and why we as humans have such a dire need for Jesus, for salvation. So I just wanted to take a moment today and share with you that book, The Greatest Gift, so that you know what goes with every gift you send and how, how big of a blessing those gifts are because it's giving the children an opportunity to learn about who Jesus is. So again, as I've said in the past, thank you for praying for these kids, for praying for their salvation, for sending those gifts, for blessing kids around the world. Um, through your hands and feet and that that shoebox, you are sharing Christ with kids. So I just wanted you guys to know what went with it. I thought it was cool. So I figured I'd share that with you. If you want to see the video that I made on this guy, I'll link it here. And make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any more OCC content. Or on our lives as a missionary family. A book book. We'll see you guys on the next video. Amen. Can you say bye-bye? Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.